This is lesson 8-1, part 2. In this lesson, we're going to write inverse variation equations, and we will um, do some problems that involve joint variation and other variation. Suppose x and y vary inversely, and x equals 8 when y equals negative 7. Find the equation. So first thing we can do is noticing that it's an inversely related, we know that our equation will look like y equals k over x. We also know that we can calculate k by multiplying x times y. So if we multiply 8 times negative 7, we get negative 56. So our equation will be y equals negative 56 over k. Then we're going to graph this. So if x is 1, y would be negative 56. So we're going to need some kind of scale that will work. Um, so let's say we just count by tens. So if x equals 1, y would be negative 56. And if x is 56, y would be negative 1. So right about there. So we get a one branch right here in the fourth quadrant. And we'll have a similar situation in this second quadrant. So you get a graph that looks like that. Okay, then we want to know what is y when x is 2. So we'll just plug 2 in. And 2 goes into 56. Negative 28 times. So our answer is negative 28. Okay, here's another example. Suppose that we have decided to pick up litter each weekend in the park. Each week there is approximately the same amount of litter, and this data table shows us the number of students who worked each of the first four weeks of this project and the time needed to pick up the litter. So we want to write an equation. First thing we have to do is determine if it's a direct or inverse variation. So um, since the more students we have, the less time it takes, let's um, check and see if it's inverse. To determine if it's an inverse variation, we would multiply x times y and see if it comes out to a constant. If it comes out to a constant, then it is an inverse variation. So I'm going to multiply these. So when we multiply 3 times 85, we get 255. 5 times 51 is 255. 12 times 21 is 252. And 17 times 15 is 255. So even though this one is slightly different, it's only a little bit different, so we're going to say that's close enough, and we're going to say that our constant term is k, uh, is 255. So our equation will be y equals 255 over x. So then the next question is how many students should there be so that we can get this job done in 30 minutes? So to get the job done in 30 minutes, I'm going to change my variables to match what it is in the table. Since um, the n here is in the position of x and the t is in the position of y, our equation is going to look like this. So if we want to be done in 30 minutes, we put 30 in for t and we solve for n. So as you know, you can multiply both sides by n which will get the n out of the denominator. Then we divide by 30, and we get n equals 255 divided by 30, which is 8.5. So if we want to complete the job in no more than 30 minutes, we're going to need nine people. 